Hi and welcome to my channel. For today's DIY topic, we're going to be talking all things fuse taps to power external devices such as dash cams, LED lights, or any other small accessory that you want to run in your car. So let's get into it. Now there are two main types of taps that you want to familiarize yourself with. Those are three prong and two prong. Those will differ depending on your car. So be sure to Google the exact fuse that yours takes and you can find whichever style on Amazon. And two prongs have specific ones as far as like the different type of prong lengths and um, distance between each other. So be sure to check that as well and make sure you get the right tap, which you again can find on Amazon pretty readily. Now I'm gonna break this down in a couple parts. First of all, how to test a circuit with a multimeter to make sure you're using the right one, depending on the application of whatever device you're using. And then we're gonna cover orientation specifically for the two prong. It's very important, so do not skip that part to make sure you're using your fuse tap correctly. So to determine the orientation of your fuse tap, the three prong does not matter. The hot will come in through the center prong, go to each circuit independently, and you can put it in either way and it will protect adequately for both circuits. Now with the standard two prong, this is where it's very important. We'll take a look at what's going on behind the scenes so you always install this in the correct way. It's very important to make sure you're protecting both devices properly as well as your entire vehicle. So in a normal circuit, we all pretty much know how this works. You've got the battery power coming in and exiting to your device with this 10 amp fuse protecting the 10 amp device. Now when we install a two prong fuse tap, this is basically what's going on. You have a shared power coming in from the battery into both fuses, and then you're powering each device independently. So you've got your five amp device up top and the 10 amp device with the uh, appropriate fuses here accordingly. Now if we take a look at what's going on inside the tap itself, the the parts exiting to the devices are actually separated. So each circuit is independent and it's protecting each circuit independently. However, this side is shared. Now this is important to understand. So when you install this, you don't put it in the wrong way. So if you're testing your fuse and let's say the hot side is on this side, you wanna make sure you do not put it in this way. So if the hot side comes in this direction, remember these two are isolated all the power is gonna go through this single fuse and then go to each device. So now you have one fuse protecting both circuits and potentially you'll over, uh, you'll pull more power through this fuse than it's rated for and break circuits to both devices. So if you ever install a fuse tap, you have issues with your devices going out and having to replace fuses, that's more than likely what's happening is you've installed this in incorrectly. So again, if we look at what's going on behind the scene, you'll have hot coming in the incorrect leg, power for both devices traveling through the 10 amp, the 10 amp fuse, totaling about 15 amps because you're gonna add these two together. And again, this is at peak power. So even if you install this and these devices work initially, if they do fail later on, that's probably what's happening is your power load eventually will exceed this 10 amp fuse. And then we are traveling into each circuit independently. So you're not actually protecting each device independently. So to sum it up and make it simple to understand and remember, the leg opposite of the wire coming off of your fuse tap is the side that should be connected to your battery incoming power. Now before we go testing for the correct circuit for your new application, it's important to know how you want that device to function. There are two main types of circuits to keep in mind. One is constant power from the battery regardless of the key orientation. So whether the key is on or off and you're driving the vehicle, the other is powered only when the accessory is on on the car, which means you're basically running and driving and the key is on. So if it's a dash cam, for example, that you only want to have operating while you're driving the car and the key is on, then that's a circuit you want to check for is one that has power when the key is on and none when the key is off. And then let's say you have a dash cam that detects motion, um, aka you're not driving the car, someone bumps into the parking lot, it turns the dash cam on automatically. That would be an application where you probably want power coming to that device no matter what, if the key is on or off. So make sure you understand LED interior lights, stuff like that is all stuff you're probably going to want with the key only on so you don't draw power when you're not in the vehicle and actually run your battery down overnight. So just keep that in mind before we get into this next section here where we show you how to test for a circuit. Okay, so we've located our fuse box in our vehicle, which on this truck is over here on the side, and we have this installation diagram of all the fuses and what they go to. So again, go ahead and Google the type of fuse you're looking for, whether that's ignition on or just battery powered, regardless of the ignition being on or off. And go ahead and do a little research. I've already done mine. I know fuse 26 is what I'm looking for, but it's always a good idea to verify or if you are unable to find on the internet what fuse you should be using, I'll show you how to test here uh, using this method, using this multimeter. So if you're unfamiliar with how to use a multimeter, for today's application, all we really wanna do is make sure that we are in 
DC, direct current, and we're gonna be at 10 volts. So we see the voltage spike whenever we get power to the circuit that we're testing. So we're just gonna take our voltmeter. There's all sorts of different styles. That's just how mine works. And we're gonna set it to 10, and now we're ready to test. So the red uh, is currently in the positive slot on my multimeter, and the black is in the ground. So whenever we go to test, we're going to connect the black to some metal part of the vehicle. So we're grounded out. And then we're gonna stick this in what we assume to be is the hot side of the circuit. Again, this is a three prong fuse style. So I know the middle slot is gonna be my hot. We're gonna test each circuit that we wanna try independently. And again, I'm gonna test one that shows you the battery being on regardless of the ignition being on or off. And then I'm gonna show you one uh, where the ignition is giving power to this circuit only when the key is on. So with our multimeter ready, we are going to first ground this somewhere on the black. So the black is our neutral, the red is our hot, meaning we're gonna be testing for power on this one. So I'm gonna test these two here, these two 10 amps next to this 50 amp circuit, and we'll see which one turns out to be the correct one. Gone ahead and removed the two fuses that we just talked about, those two 10 amp. And for reference, if we look here, F26, it says USB charging, and the one next to it, F30, is the heads-up display uh, and some other various electronics on here. So, again, to test, the first thing we're gonna do, and because this is a three-prong fuse, we know the middle is our hot. If you're doing a two-prong, you may have to try both sides to verify which side is correct. But we're gonna insert this into the center slot, and then we're gonna take our ground and we're gonna test it on something metal grounded to the chassis. And you can see every time I tap this needle, the meter does not jump. So that tells us, okay, we don't have power coming to the circuit with the ignition off, which it is currently. So now we're gonna go over to the next one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna insert into the center one and then we are going to touch our ground to the vehicle and you can see that meter jump. So that tells us that even with the ignition off, you can see there's no power in the cab we have power here. So if we're doing something like a dash cam that for some reason has a you know constant power going to it so you can detect if your vehicle has been hit while you're in a parking lot, this would be a circuit you would wanna use. However, if we're doing something that we don't want constant power to like interior lighting LED, we would probably wanna use this one, but just because it's not on with this key being off does not mean it has power going to it at all. So that means we wanna to test to make sure it works the way we intend to, which means we're gonna turn the key on and then try it again. Okay, so I've turned the ignition on in the car and I've gone ahead and put this back into the initial fuse we tried that had no power with the key off. So now the key is on for a push button. You just push the button with the key in the vehicle. You do not start the vehicle or you can, it doesn't really matter, but um, now we're gonna test it, right? So we've got it here, we're gonna test our ground and now we have power. So that tells us that whatever we want to use device-wise here will only be on when the key is on, which is what we want for interior lights and stuff like that that we only want while we're with the vehicle on. So that's pretty much how to test for the correct circuit depending on your application. The last thing we're gonna do is install the fuse tap, which here I've got the appropriately sized fuse for the new circuit, which is the five amp, and the 10 amp on the bottom for the, the original circuit. Again, the original circuit is always the bottom slot. And we are just going to install it And you can see my interior lights came on. I've already got them wired up. Um, and I grounded to this little socket here with a little eyelet just to have my ground wire all in one spot. So that's how you install a fuse tab. Pretty straightforward for a three prong, two prong. Again, a little more tricky. Make sure you watch the entire vehicle or the entire video, excuse me, to get the entire picture on how to do that. Last thing we're gonna talk about is how to properly size the fuse for your new device. All you're gonna do is look at the tag that comes off of your device or in the manual to see what the power draw is. Again, fuse tabs are only good for light duty applications such as five to 10 amps. So all you wanna do is make sure you round up to the nearest fuse possible for your application. So if you have a 1.5 amp, the lowest fuse you can buy is a five amp. That's the fuse you wanna use. If you have a six amp application, you wanna round up to a 7.5 you just wanna be as close as possible to that device draw as possible. You just don't wanna get in a situation where your device takes eight amps and you only put in a five amp fuse because you'll overdraw over that fuse and break the circuit inadvertently. That's it for today's DIY topic. If there's anything else you've seen in my builds or my channel that you want me to break down in more detail, be sure to like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my other videos on other DIY topics.